the biggest laboratory that really can be used in order to evaluate the different concepts that we have to how to design buildings and bridges so they can resist the earthquake is really the in the field, uh, the places that have been hit hard with the earthquake. One of the really major uh, places that I visited uh, right after the earthquake was a 1995 Kobe earthquake that happened actually a year after the Los Angeles earthquake, 1994. Uh, uh, I visited also the Kobe in, in 96, year after the earthquake, just to see that how they uh, repaired the damage structure. Uh, unfortunately, during the 1995 Kobe earthquake, more than uh, 7,500 people lost their lives. There were lots of damages to the uh, uh, to the buildings and the, and the bridges. And uh, when I traveled there, actually, uh, we I believe we went to Kyoto, and then all the transportation means was shut down between the Kobe and the, uh, the Kyoto. And and I remember that we had to take a train and then go to some locations and then take a bus and then basically walk. Uh, one of the major highways actually that connected the Kobe to the rest of the uh, cities was the Hanshine Expressway. Uh, this is a, those of you who remember, uh, CNN was uh, really showing this highway that had just elevated highway that had uh, tilted over. It was supported basically, the elevated highway was supported by a very large diameter concrete column, and it didn't have enough uh, reinforcement to confine the concrete that was in it. And during the earthquake, having a massive mass on top of these columns caused the, these inertia forces caused the, basically the, 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 the that highway to collapse. And that was the, the basically the main artery uh, for the communication transportation between the Kobe and Kobe and the rest of the places. That earthquake actually happened very early in the morning. And there were a couple of lessons that, I mean, we've seen time and time again. Uh, uh, Kobe actually is a, is a place that a very rich Japanese actually go live. Uh, one side is a mountain and then the, you come down and it's a, it's a water, basically. So, uh, and, and the earthquake happened very early in the morning and people had got up just to uh, fix a breakfast and so on. And uh, unfortunately, gas lines were on and guess what? And the fire, fire was a one big, a big item there. So actually in earthquakes, fire is a very, a very concern. Damage to buildings is something, but I think the chance of the fire, uh, the roads being uh, uh, shut down, and there's a bunch of other things that really are, are as important. And we will touch on that a little bit later on. Uh, so uh, the fire was a one big factor. The another factor that was in Kobe earthquake that was, is a liquefaction. Something that we have seen in 1999, uh, Turkey earthquakes, and also February 2023 earthquakes in, in Turkey. Liquefaction basically is the soil becomes like a liquid. Now imagine a building sitting on a solid soil, but all of a sudden sits on a, on a water. So what's going to happen? Well, the building is going to just tip over. So the liquefaction was a was a really really a major major. Uh, uh, cause of the uh, some of the collapses that we saw in the case of the, uh, the basically the Turkey earthquake and also in the Kobe, there was lots of liquefaction. There are ways actually to mitigate the problem associated with the, with the um, liquefaction and solidify the, the, the ground so that liquefaction doesn't, doesn't take place. Um, uh, another a uh, place that I would say I uh, the, well very the last one that, that I visited was the because I'm, I live in, in Florida so Puerto Rico is a very close by uh, January 2020 just about a couple of months before the pandemic 
started. There was a there was an earthquake in Puerto Rico, and I traveled there. And if I I should speak Spanish, unfortunately I don't. And so when I went there, I just rented a car and uh, uh, went into the vicinity of the areas that they, they were saying that there were damages. But I also followed the I remember a, a news van uh, because I knew that the news stations they know. Uh, where to go. So I followed them. In fact, it happened to be the the, uh, the news crew were from a station in Miami, Florida. So I followed them. Now, one thing, the damage in the Puerto Rico earthquake, January 2020, was not that extensive. There were isolated damages. But one thing that happens because of the aftershocks, and I could see everywhere, even though the, the, the earthquake was not very strong and didn't cause lots of damages, anywhere close to the, for example, the Turkey earthquakes or the Kobe earthquake, but people were scared and they live outside. And, and even though they knew that in general, in general aftershocks, the intensity of the aftershocks are less than the earthquake itself. Although in the case of the Turkey, it was an aftershock, actually two earthquakes. The second earthquake happened uh, completely in a different fall. So it was a two separate earthquake, but in general, if the earthquake is related to one fault, usually aftershocks are, are smaller and depending on the intensity of the, the main earthquakes, uh, uh, the, the number of the aftershocks depends on it. So, uh, so those, are the, uh, those are the, I would say, uh, that that was the last uh, place that I visited. But again, uh, uh, unfortunately, we as a structural engineer, who uh, we we look at the we look at the performance of the buildings and the bridges in the field, trying to um, better understand the validity of the ideas and the concepts that we try to develop. One thing I would say is that really after 1980, uh, I would say early 1980s, we really know everything that we should know. I would say good majority of the knowledge that we should know on how to design uh, steel or concrete buildings or bridges so that they can stand the forces of the earthquake. After that, really, it's a case of, it is a case of uh, how much as a society we try to invest and retrofit and repair the, the buildings and the bridges that we know they are prone to, to the earthquakes. Uh, in the case of the Turkey, really one cannot say uh, uh, all these damages that we saw was because of the lack of knowledge. Not at all. In fact, we have many, I have uh, many uh, colleagues that here in the U.S., that uh, they are originally from Turkey, they go back and forth, and they are one of the, the uh, some of the best uh, structural engineers that you can find knowledgeable in the area of the earthquake engineering. That, that's not at all. It's a it's a not, it's a matter of we will we will touch on that uh, some of the reasons why so much damage in the case of the Turkey earthquake, but it's really after nineteen. Uh, uh, 80, about 1980, we knew everything that one should know on how to prevent the damage, okay? The management of the earthquake engineering really is not, does not start after the earthquake happens. It happens, starts before it, okay? And then there's also a, another tendency that we have, which is as a society, it happens everywhere in the world. When an earthquake happens, uh, immediately after that, there are many studies that take place related to earthquake. And uh, as the time passes, two, three, four, five years, and so on, we tend to forget that earthquake is going to happen again. Now, the more time passes from the earthquake that just happened, you are getting closer actually to the next one. On the other hand, as a society, we do the reverse. Immediately after the earthquake, we, it's in our mind. We, we, we try to, as a society, do something about that. 
uh, either invest or they don't do research or they retrofit or whatever. But then as the time passes, when we are getting closer to the next big one, we tend to relax. And that's, uh, that's a tendency as a human that we have. But in any event, we, uh, uh, at the moment, really, we, it's just a, it's not a matter of a knowledge. It's just a matter of how much as a society we, we put an importance on retrofitting, repairing uh, buildings, bridges that are prone to damage.